Thank you so much, Rod, for, for these um, clarifications, and, and I think we've all heard uh, as well your call for support. Um, as we have uh, seen, this culture of impunity uh, goes beyond the Northeast conflict. This is not specific to this area or uh, this situation, and this is uh, the moment uh, to let the opportunity to DJ Switch to talk about uh, this uh, huge uh, and, and, and tremendous movement um, around NSAS movement against uh, impunity for police violence. Catherine, it's over to you. All right, thank you for having me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You see, we have a popular saying in Nigeria, Wahala no de finish, meaning the problems never end. You see, I grew up in a family of eight where my parents really had their hand full. They worked to give us the best they could afford. Education, Medicare, food, allowances, most importantly, a home. My parents taught us how to respect each other's differences, understand each other, stand for each other, and protect each other. I must say, my brother did take a lot of the blame for my, my many mischiefs. But unfortunately, in the late 90s to 2000s, things took a turn for the worse when the Ishakiris and the Ijaws in Wari, where we lived back then, went into war with, with, with each other because of a failure in leadership and respect for differences. Many were displaced from their homes and killed. My parents lost a lot and I had to grow up real quick. This was my first real encounter with insecurity, a lack of accountability and irresponsibility. Nigeria is home to over 200 million brothers and sisters that are beautifully diverse in tribe and faith. But we lack education, a functional health system, electricity, we lack jobs, security. The basic things that any parent, guardian, and in this case, a leader should provide so that we can achieve our ambitions. Instead, these basic things have been weaponized by our leaders and used against us used to lure us to do their bidding, used to oppress us, keep us too hungry to be angry, used to kill us. So dear Agnes, it was indeed hopeful to see the new generation of Nigerians stand up for Nigeria, not religious or tribe based. But if we don't act, this new generation will be hunted like myself, wiped out or succumb to the will of a dying generation. But even a magician cannot perform one trick forever because we, the Nigerian people, were tired. And for the first time, I saw Nigerians stand for each other in protest all over the country. End SARS. Now, SARS is the Special Anti-Robbery Squad Unit, which the government rebranded to SWAT after disbanding the said SARS over three times and twice in one year. SARS have a track record of more daylight robbery than actual robbers. They've murdered more innocent citizens than murderers in the, in the society, more rape than the public is even aware of, constantly exhibiting their lack of intelligence and training by harassing Nigerians, either because of how we look, the hair we have, the cars we drive, or if we have tattoos on our bodies. When you speak up and ask what you may have done wrong, they beat you up, lock you up, or kill you all together. Now this gave birth to a movement, and SARS, a movement against police brutality, which has since become a much bigger movement against bad governance. And the reason is simple. From the president, General Muhammadu Buhari downwards, they are all SARS. You see, because this is a government, yes, that would rather silence and kill its citizens rather than be guided by their concerns and their cries. Hide COVID-19 palliatives, mind you, that were donated rather than feed its people. One that would rather spend quality time with his cows rather than address its citizens. The same government that chose to inject rogue elements into peaceful protests rather than protect its people, but choose to cuddle terrorists. It is the same government that froze the accounts of protesters and seized passports, but cannot seem to trace the accounts that sponsor terrorism. It states in the constitution that the security and welfare of the Nigerian people is the primary purpose of the government. But on the 20th of October, 2020, 
The Nigerian army, sanctioned by the government, stormed the Lekki toll gate in, in what I call a first wave of assault. No warning, no dialogue, just guns blazing. Shooting into a crowd of the bravest set of people I have ever met. Braver than the men and women trained to be brave. Braver than the government officials who sent them there. They shot at us with live, live ammunition. We braced ourselves, we screamed, we sang, we cried, all while waving our Nigerian flags. You see, as I witnessed people die, I truly, I truly believed we would all die. And so I started to live broadcast the insanity on Instagram, and I am not the only one. In a matter of minutes, dreams and futures were lost. Nigerians killed, unprovoked. But the commander of the 65 Battalion, Salisu Bello, claimed to have live ammunition. His response was that my coming close to him poses a threat to him and he will act accordingly. Is this the act of someone who gave us water and drinks? I also have another clip from the same night where you can hear a lady's voice asking the whereabouts of the people that had been shot. Further proof that the bodies we saw were taken away by the army present. The army claimed to have cared for us. But when Nigerians, the Nigerians that were on that live, when they called ambulances to assist us at the toll gate, they were stopped and asked to turn back by the army. We were forced to have a crash course on medical procedures, attempting to extract a bullet from the leg of a protester until one ambulance came from the back. So please tell me, what then was their intention if not to kill us? At this point, we had counted 15 bodies. A few hours later came the second wave of, ass of assault by the Nigerian police with the same modus operandi killing, injuring those of us left at the toll gate. The same police also shot at us the next morning. Now listen, this is just one incident. There is Obibo, there's Mpo, there's Zabamari, many more. The Nigerian authorities, under the poor, corrupt and misguided leadership of President Buhari, down to his cohorts, Governor Jide Sangwolu, General Takara Buratai, Brigadier Taiwo, F.O. Omata, Lai Mohammed, and many more. They have all tried severally to deny these events while in the same breath contradicting themselves. This government continues to fail in doing its duty as what I would have, I would have called an elected government if that was not riddled with corruption itself. And so today I urge you as members of part of the global governing body and other members not here present today, to take necessary and swift actions in ensuring justice is served to the Nigerian people. Through your investigations, I believe you will find, you will find ample evidence to bring charges against the elements in the Nigerian government. Please, please do not continue to place us at the back burner or say we are not a priority. Do not turn a blind eye to a nation with immense potential to be on the world stage if if only these potentials are harnessed and not killed off. As Nigeria is a member of the United Nations, which says membership is open to all peace-loving states, it is evident in that statement alone the state of Nigeria has failed. Our leaders too greedy, too corrupt, and quite frankly, unequipped intellectually, mentally, physically, to protect Nigerians or move the nation anywhere. If it is indeed true that the first lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, can relocate to Dubai, citing insecurity in the presidential villa, Aso Rock, the most secure building in Nigeria, then I ask, where do we, the average Nigerian, go? Mr. Rod, you say your office has about 10 in invest 80, sorry, mind you, 80 investigators. It was funny when you said it, but I can assure you, millions of Nigerians are willing to help provide all you may need to reduce the potential burden on this request. We only have our voices. That is all we have. 
as a people, we are using it to sorosoke. So please listen. As Agnes said, the country is a keg. It's sitting on a keg of gunpowder because of all the things that we have been deprived of. I am advocating for all types of peace, but justice. And through justice is the only way peace can truly, peace can truly thrive. It is now your duty to help us show that democracy, accountability does not only belong to a certain group of countries, but to all. As I said earlier, wahala no de finish. But that does not mean problems are not solved. The time for action is indeed now. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, 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 and thank you for using this, your, your fame to raise awareness and, to, and to, to fight for this, uh, for justice for all. Thank you so much for this. Um, unfortunately, I think we have now come to the end of the session. Um, I didn't see any specific questions, so I guess I've seen a lot of comments that uh, all of you have probably seen. Um, and so I think we need to, 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 to end, to conclude now. I would like to thank